This is a lecture from Open Tuition. Okay, I'm going to work through the uh, question health nuts from the September December 2020 exam. Uh, and before we read the scenario, so as not to waste time, always look at the requirements first and get a feel for what it is we're going to have to look for. And so part A, calculate both the numbers of customers health nuts needs to break even and the margin of safety as a percentage for the month of June for the gym and the cafe. Now obviously at the moment we don't really know what they're talking about but you should be clear what we mean in general about uh, break even and margin of safety. Um, and obviously I'll remind you as we do the workings, but we need to do it uh, both for the gym and the cafe. Explain what each of your calculations in A tells health nuts about the performance of the gym and the cafe. Well, uh, I think fairly obviously we're going to have to do part A before we can then <clears throat> start to do any explaining. Part B, calculate the budgeted total weighted average contribution to sales, the CS ratio, and the budgeted profit per month for health nuts if it closes the cafe and opens a creche instead. And finally, D, advise health nuts, so clearly not a calculation part here, uh, considering both financial and non-financial factors, whether it should replace the cafe with a creche, and whether the calculations in Part C provide enough information to make such a decision. So, we've already seen mention of this creche, um, and gym and cafe. Now let's go back and start reading the scenario. Uh, in Health Nuts is a fitness centre. Now the first paragraph in uh, paper PM questions, more often than not, is just background. It's unlikely that this information uh, we'll actually need, but we'll have a quick read anyway. They offer pairs you go gym facilities. It's got a fully fitted gym, capacity 200 users at one time. It also has under car parking spaces and an on-site cafe. So there's a gym and a cafe. And obviously there's parking. Uh, the parking and the on-site cafe are both only for customers using the gym. The fitness centre has shower facilities for customers and Health Nuts provides all customers with a clean towel to use on entry. Now that's useful. It's open 360 days a year from 7 until 9. Now we get into the real body of it. The customers pay $8.40 for access to the gym for an hour, plus unlimited time in the cafe. If they want to use the car park, they pay an additional dollar per visit. 80% of customers use the car park. They'd be monitoring the number of customers attending throughout each day for the month of June, which is an average month, and for which they were open 30 days. The average number of customers per day is 330, with 40 of them attending between 9 and 5. The total cost of the fitness centre, excluding the cafe, have been recorded. Fixed costs 48,000, variable cost $1.20. So all of that was about the gym. It does carry on and say half the customers use the cafe. Well, for the moment, I'm not interested. We are going to look at the gym first of all. It also carries on an in bold uh, crash proposal. Well, I'm not interested in that at all for the moment. Um, if you remember from the requirements, thinking about the crash comes later. We want break even a margin of safety for the gym and then for the cafe. So let's make a start and let's look at the gym. How do we work out break even? Well, I'm not going to repeat my uh, free lecture on cost volume profit analysis, but it should be automatic by now. 
the break-even. Uh, we divide the fixed costs by the contribution per unit. The units here are customers. So let's work out the contribution per unit for the gym. So first of all, what's the revenue? Well, for the gym itself, it says they pay $8.40 for access to the gym. So the gym revenue, $8.40. If they want to park, they pay an extra dollar and 80% use the car park. So there's extra revenue from the parking. Well, surely on average, if 80% use it and pay a dollar each time, on average, it's 0.8 per customer. I know you can use a spreadsheet to do that arithmetic, but I, I rather think we can calculate 80% of a dollar uh, in our heads. So what's the total revenue per customer? Uh, $8.40 plus 80 cents, $9.20. To get the contribution, we'll deduct the variable costs. And of course, it tells us that little um, table in the middle the variable cost per customer is $1.20. And therefore, the contribution per customer uh, $9.20 less $1.20 is 8. Now, although don't waste uh, too much time uh, formatting things, I will make it look a bit neater. It'd be better if those were all to two decimal places. It looks nicer. Uh, and I will highlight uh, the contribution per customer. Uh, I'll make it, but not highlight, I'll bold it. Anyway, to get break even, as I said earlier, to break even, the total contribution must equal uh, the fixed costs. And so, what are the fixed costs? Again, they're not hidden, it's directly in that table 48,000. And so break even number of customers uh, is the fixed costs divided by contribution per customer at 6,000. And that I will definitely bold uh, because that's the first bit of the question. Break even customers 6,000 per month. It also, though, wants the margin of safety. And so, although we'll break even at 6,000, the margin of safety, we need to look at how many customers they're expecting and what percentage fall we can allow. And so the budgeted customers... Let's go back. Um, it says the average number of customers per day is 330. Uh, they're open 30 days a month. And so the budgeted customers, 30 days, 330 per month, is 9,900 per month. And so finally for this bit, uh, the margin of safety It's a question of what percentage fall can we afford from 9.9 down to 6,000 as a percentage uh, of the number we've budgeted. So I'll do it as a formula. Uh, we can afford it to fall from 9.9. Uh, sorry, I'll put a bracket round it because of what's coming. We can afford it to fall. Well, I'll start again. <laughs> 
equals bracket. We can afford it to fall from 9,900 down to 6,000. So that's how many it can fall by. We'll express that as a percentage of the number we've budgeted. Well, of course, that's all a bit ridiculous. A, it's a decimal <laughs> and it wants a percent, but also all those uh, decimal places. So let's change it to a percent and I'll do 0 0.00 percent. There we are. So again, highlight because that's part of what was actually required. But there's the margin of safety. We can afford our expected customers, we can afford it to drop by almost 40% and still be profitable. All right, well, that was the gym, but in exactly the same sort of way, it wants us to do it for the cafe. And so for the cafe, we need to know what's the contribution per customer, what are the fixed costs, uh, repeat the exercise. Well, now I can read this bit about the cafe. On average, half the customers use the cafe in June. The average spend is $2.20, of which 60% is drinks, profit margin 60%. The remainder is food, so that's the other 40%, and the profit margin there is 40%. The fixed cost for the cafe, 3,600. <coughs> well, we need the contribution. You can do it two ways. If you want per customer, put in the revenue, 220, subtract the costs. Or we can actually go straight to it because surely the contribution we could if I could type the contribution uh, from drinks again per customer what's it going to be it says 60 percent of drinks so the revenue point six times it's 220 spend um, of that though the profit margin and therefore the contribution here is 60 percent and so there's the contribution per customer from drinks. And similarly, the contribution from food here, um, the remainder is food. So 40% of 220 is food. And of that, the contribution is 40%, 0.352. So the total contribution per customer, the two together, is that much. Uh, what are the fixed costs? What's it say? The specific fixed costs associated with running the cafe are 3,600 for the month. I better put in that is per, then there's no confusion, that is per customer. Oh, which I, oh dear, I wish I hadn't bothered, but still I'll leave it. Um, this is uh, per month. And therefore, rather more importantly, the break even customers. Uh, the fixed costs divided by contribution per customer. It's a rather ludicrous number again. And so I'll round it. Custom. There we are, 3147. Highlight, because that's part of the uh, requirement. And finally, the margin of safety. Oh, sorry, 
Before that, it's I need the budgeted customers. Um, bah, bah, bah. It says half the customers use the cafe. Well, we already know that the total number of customers using the gym is 9,900. So it's half of that, 0.5 times 9,900, 4,950. And so now I can write the margin of safety. Exactly the same way I did before for the um, uh, gym. Um, I'll open brackets. It's the difference between the budgeted and the break even, close brackets, as a percentage of the budgeted. And again, a ridiculous number, but again, let's do it. To, there we are, two decimal places. Highlight, because it's part of the answer. Oh, sorry, bold it, and there we are. So there we are for both of them. We, sorry, we've got the break-even number of customers uh, and we've got the margin of safety. So that's parts one and two. Uh, part B, and we're going to have to put it on the same spreadsheet, explain what your calculations tell us about the performance in gym and cafe. Well, not a lot, to be honest. But it is telling us that for both the gym and the cafe, first of all, we are profitable. We've got far more customers than we need for break even. And um, to be loss making numbers will need to fall by approximately I'm not going to write the precise figures down because they're there but it's it's approximately 40 percent well, it's by more than a third put it that way fall by more than a third Now, my English isn't terribly good there, but that's quite sufficient for the three marks. Uh, in both cases, I will add that. So, um, the purpose of part B was really just to prove that you knew basically the relevance of the margin of safety. Now, it hadn't just been that you'd learned a formula. Jolly good. Well, that's part A. So let's go on with part C. Part C, calculate the budgeted total weighted average contribution to sales ratio and the budgeted profit per month for health nuts if it closes the cafe and opens a creche instead. So we know they've got a gym, spent enough time on that. The cafe we can now forget. They're going to close the cafe. But if they're opening a creche, we'd better have a read about what's happening with the creche. And what does it say? After reviewing all of the above information, the manager of Health Nuts has put together a proposal to close the cafe. Uh, the fitness centre and convert it into a creche for children. This would mean parents could leave their children in the creche while they use the fitness centre between the hours of nine and five only and the charge will be four dollars per child. Initial research suggests that customers have an average of two children each. 
Uh, uh, so for each customer, it's going to be $8. The crest is expected to attract new customers and increase the average number of customers between 9 and 5 by 300%. And only these new customers will use the crash. So, there's a tiny bit of working so I don't forget. The new customers, um, they have to use the gym, but they'll also use, use the crash. It'll increase the average number between 9 and 5 by 300%. Well, there's one bit of information we've never used until now. The average number of customers in the gym per day is 330, with 40 of these attending during 9 till 5. And the crash, it says, it'll increase the average number between 9 and 5 by 300%. So it'll increase by 300%, three times 40, which is 120. Uh, and remember, it's only these new customers will use the crash. Car park usage is expected to continue to be 80%. The fixed costs of running the crash are 8,000 a month. The variable cost per child 50 cents. So one other thing I will just write up. The um, contribution per customer for the crash Well remember each customer has on average two children. Does it say that? Yes, they have average two children each. So the contribution for each customer, two children times the charging four dollars per child. The variable cost is 50 cents per child. So seven dollars per customer. Now then, let's work out um, the CS ratio. And although there's more than one way you can get the weighted average CS ratio, the overall CS ratio, given we've still got the gym and we've got a crash as well, although there's more than one way, I think the most efficient way, the safest way, the most logical way, is the way I show in my lectures, which is to work out what the budgeted total contribution is What's the budgeted revenue, the sales, and then divide one by the other? So that's what I'll do. Uh, I'll work out total revenue, total contribution for the gym. Uh, and for the uh, crash. And get the total of the two. So let's do the revenue first of all. Uh, the revenue from the gym. Now we did work out in the previous part. There we are. The revenue is $9.20 per customer. So what's the total budgeted revenue going to be? Uh, uh, $9.20 per customer. How many customers? Well, there were 330, but remember, we've now got an extra 120 customers. So, 330 plus 120. Uh, that's customers per day. There are 30 days in the month. So there's the total revenue from the gym. Uh, what's the total revenue from the crash? 
There's 120 people using the crash. Uh, the revenue, well, it's $4 per child, but each customer has two children. So two children, $4. And again, 30 days, 28800 And so the total revenue from both together There we are, 153,000. What about contribution? Well, from the gym, uh, nothing's changed there in terms of the contribution per unit. And so what was it? $8. Contribution per customer, $8. So the total contribution uh, eight dollars. How many customers? Well, it was three thirty, but we've now an extra hundred and twenty, uh, and it's thirty days. And what's the contribution from the crash? Well, I've done my workings. It's seven dollars per customer. There are hundred and twenty customers. per day, so 30 days in a month. There we are. And so the total um, uh, contribution and so finally for the first bit of part C what is the weighted average Uh, CS ratio. It's the contribution divided by the revenue. And uh, it's always hard to make that a percent. Oh, I press the wrong button. There we are. 87.06%. Okay, so there's the weighted average CS ratio. However, it also wants to know the budgeted profit per month. Well, that surely is easy enough. Uh, it's just the total. So the uh, budgeted profit will take the total contribution. I may as well just copy myself. 133,200. Uh, less the total fixed costs. And what are the fixed costs? Uh, in the gym, they're 48,000. Uh, and in the uh, crash, they're 8,000 a month. And therefore, the budgeted profit is what? Seventy-seven two hundred. Oh, ridiculous! Sorry about that. What I was trying to do. <laughs> Bold it. There. So there we are. Again, because I'm talking, it's t 
taken me a while, but um, I think that's pretty straightforward for six marks. OK, so that's part C. All we're left with now is part D. So let's now do uh, part D, the final part. And part D says, advise health nets, considering both financial and non-financial factors, whether we should replace the cafe with a creche, and whether the calculations in part C provide enough information to make such a decision. Well, first of all, financial factors. Well, oh, the only financial factor we can look at here is the profitability. You know, do they make more profit if they open a crash, or do they make more profit if they keep the cafe open instead? And we have a little problem here in that profit, if crash is opened, Well, we've just worked that out in part C, so that's easy. Uh, go back to part C, what was it? There you are, 77,200. However, where well, we have a little problem, profit without the crash Well, we never actually worked that out. We can work it out. We did a lot of work in part A where we had the cafe. Uh, but we never actually worked out what the profit would be. And we need to know whether we make more profit or less profit by opening the crash. But if you look back, if we didn't open the crash, then we do know the gym. We know what the contribution per customer was. And we know what the contribution per customer is for... Uh, the cafe. So we can work out fairly quickly what the total contribution would have been and therefore what the profit would have been, but we're going to need some figures that we've already calculated in part A. So, so I don't forget anything, I would use the scratch pad, which nobody marks, remember, but uh, at least I can carry figures forward without reworking everything. We do know that for the gym, uh, the contribution is eight dollars per customer. Whoops. And we do know that the customers per day uh, what was it? Remember, if we weren't opening the crash. The average number of customers per day was 3.30. Uh, for the cafe, uh, the contribution per day, uh, per customer, is what? 1.144. And the customers per day What was it? Well, on average, half the customers use the cafe, so half of 330 is what, 165. So with that information, I think we should be able to work out the profit without the crash. Uh, first of all, um, Contribution uh, from the gym. What's that going to be for the month? Where's my scratch pad gone? Uh, 330 customers. $8 uh, per customer. 30 days 
is how much I'll use my calculator or use the calculator built into the um, into the software. Use either of them. But 330 times 8 times 30 is 79,200. And the contribution from the cafe are 165 customers, uh, 1.144 per day, per customer rather, uh, again times 30. Is how much? One sixty-five times one point one four four times thirty. Fifty-six six two eight. So total contribution Seventeen nine two hundred plus forty six six two eight is one two five eight two eight, and for the profit we need to subtract the fixed costs, and what were they? Fixed costs uh, for the gym, excluding the cafe, were forty eight thousand. Uh, fixed cost for the cafe, 3,600. And so almost there, the total fifty-one six hundred. And therefore the profit. Uh, 125828 minus 51600 <coughs> 74228 I'll make them bulk. So it's a tiny bit annoying only having um, the word processor for this section. In fact, if you'd gone back and added it to part C, you'd still have got the marks, you know, and then you could have made use of the spreadsheet. However, uh, as a result, what are we going to advise? Uh, on financial factors, you don't need bold anymore. Um, the cafe should be replaced by the crash uh, because it results in a higher budgeted profit. Uh, now, incidentally, uh, you don't lose mass twice. So two things, if you'd have got either of those two profits wrong, you'd have lost marks, certainly if, if the crash is open, the 77200, you've lost marks in the last bit, but you'd still get full marks for giving the right advice on your figures. So, you know, if you ended up with the profit uh, with the crash is only 70,000, you'd have advised they shouldn't open the crash. Well, you'd still get full marks here for the right advice on your figures. If you hadn't been able to finish the figures, then you must still start to answer part D. Um, and although you wouldn't have got full marks for this little bit of it, you'd have said you would advise doing whichever gave the higher profit, and that would still get you a mark. However, you should qualify that by saying, however, 
It depends on two things. This depends on the accuracy of the estimates. You know, the crash in particular, they estimated the fixed costs. They were going to charge $4 and so on. Well, if any of those estimates were wrong, then there's not a massive difference in the profit. It could change the advice. And one other thing, and also, no account has been taken of the cost of converting the cafe into a crash. He said they were going to convert the cafe, but you know, we've no idea how much that costs. If that was going to cost several hundred thousand to convert, then I'm not sure that it would be necessarily worth doing when it only gives us an extra 3,000 profit a month. Well, that's a financial. As far as non-financial factors, well, we can't offer any advice. We don't know. All we know is, all right, they get an extra 120 customers, but we're only concerned there because it gives us extra profit. Uh, certainly, we do not have enough information we don't have any information uh, regarding non-financial factors. Uh, the sort of things we'd need to know um, and give some examples. For example, what sort of non-financial factors could be affected? Um, we know here, or we, we estimate, we'll get 120 new customers by having a crash, but might existing customers be unhappy about um, losing the cafe and therefore we might lose existing customers uh, what about staff We don't know, but might there be staff problems if existing cafe staff uh, have to start working in the crash? I mean, there are only examples. I'll give a few. They're not expecting much here for six marks, but uh, what, do the calculation in Part C provide enough information? No, we do not have information. Uh, and there we are, that's enough. Okay.